Hello, my name is Hazel Tame. Recently, I've had the opportunity to work alongside the National Trust at the gardens in Sizer Castle in Cumbria. This experience sparked my interest in the incredibly diverse world of botany and helped me to appreciate there is far more to plants than meets the eye. In this talk, I hope to reveal some fascinating stories behind a flower we regard as synonymous with the English country garden. This is the tale of the foxglove and its curious connections with mythology, chemistry and medicine. The foxglove has a long and intriguing past and even the roots of its name are steeped in mystery. It is thought that foxglove could be a distortion of folksglove the little mittens of folktale fairies believed to haunt the woody dells where the flowers love to grow. In another theory, foxglove could have derived from the Anglo-Saxon name for its musical instrument with small hanging bells. More straightforward is its scientific name, digitalis purpurea, where digitus comes from the Latin word for finger. We owe the name to a 16th century Bavarian botanist, who first documented the foxglove and observed that the tubular flowers had a finger-like resemblance. Long associated with the mythical and magical, foxgloves can be found throughout European stories. In Scandinavian legend, cunning foxes would sheath their paws with foxgloves to muffle the sound of their footsteps when raiding the hen houses of rural farmyards and were taught by fairies to ring the bell-shaped flowers to warn each other of nearby hunters. However, the foxglove's enchanting guise hides its sinister nature. The entire plant is extremely toxic, with its leaves particularly saturated in toxins. Some of the flower's nicknames hint at this deadly disposition. Dead man's bells, witch's fingers and goblin gloves, to name just a few. At this point, you may be asking yourselves how the foxglove found its way into medicine at all. Well, it had been considered a cure-all plant in folk remedies for centuries, from killing fleas to alleviating colds. Its true potential, however, came to light in the late 1700s with the work of English physician and botanist William Withering. As the story goes, Withering had heard rumours of an elderly Shropshire woman whose secret herbal remedy, administered as a tea, could successfully treat dropsy. Now, dropsy at the time was the name given to the condition of the swelling of the tissues in the body. Nowadays, it is called edema and it is understood as a condition which often precedes heart failure. Upon obtaining the tea's recipe of more than 20 herbs, Withering identified the active ingredient to be none other than the foxglove. Withering trialled with different doses and studied different preparations, finding that the foxglove was indeed effective in reducing the symptoms of dropsy and heart failure. He finally published his scientific findings in 1785 after 10 long years of experimentation, the account of the foxglove and some of its uses in medicine. Withering's book was unusual for its time, with its willingness to embrace traditional herbal law, its honest recordings of both successes and failures, and its emphasis on the care needed for accurate and safe dosages. Rather sadly, the elderly woman receives no recognition for her contributions. But what exactly gives the foxglove its paradoxical ability to both heal and to kill? Ironically, it's down to the same chemical culprit. Foxgloves contain a family of compounds called cardiac glycosides, one of which is digoxin. As you can see, digoxin is a long and complicated molecule with a fused ring structure, yet it is composed of just carbon, hydrogen and oxygen atoms. It is this chemical which can have potent effects on the heart. And here, I need to introduce a little bit of biology to help explain. The heart itself is composed of thousands of cardiac muscle cells, which contract in a regular rhythm to pump blood around the body. 
This is regulated by tiny electrical currents generated by the movement of charged particles, or ions, travelling in and out of the cells. This is kept in fine working balance by cellular pumps on the cell surface membranes. Disrupt this and you alter the way the heart beats. And here's where digoxin enters the stage. Digoxin combines tightly to a very important pump that is responsible for pushing potassium ions into the heart cells and sodium ions out, preventing it from working properly. Without a functioning pump, sodium ions begin to accumulate within the heart cells and with no other alternative are pumped out in exchange for calcium ions at an entirely different channel, ultimately resulting in the build-up of calcium ions. The new imbalance prompts the heart to contract more forcefully but at a slower rate. This is a useful tool for promoting more efficient blood flow without straining the cardiac muscle and for this reason it is often used to treat the abnormal heart rhythms of a condition known as arrhythmia. As an interesting aside, when medical supplies became critically short in World War II Britain, a national plant collecting scheme was organised as the country had to rethink and turn to homegrown natural remedies. Boy Scouts, Girl Guides and the Women's Institute were all encouraged into action, helping to identify, harvest and dry plants. Among the important herbs collected was the deadly nightshade for dilating pupils in eye surgery and, of course, the foxglove. However, the line between poison and life-saving treatment is incredibly fine. The therapeutic dose of foxglove is dangerously close to its lethal levels. If the dosage is too high, digoxin will trigger overly strong and erratic heart contractions accompanied with severe nausea, diarrhoea, fatigue and headaches. In excess, it will stop the heartbeat altogether. Curiously, long-term use of digoxin can cause a yellow tinge to the vision and blurring halos to form around bright light. This rare effect is called thanthopsia, and in an interesting twist, some experts suggest that the painter Vincent van Gogh may have experienced this condition. Throughout his life, van Gogh suffered a range of physical and mental illnesses, and in his later years, he is thought to have taken prescriptions of foxglove medications. Possibly, this exposure could account for the distinctive style of his later artworks, with its iconic predominance of yellows and halos. It may merely be speculation, but it is a fascinating thought, and as a student of chemistry, biology and art, I love a story which ties all three together. I hope you have enjoyed delving into the story of the foxglove. Its ability to capture our imaginations, both in ancient folklore and modern medicine, is a testament to the intricate relationships between humans and nature. The foxglove provides us with a lesson, with its ability to both harm and yet also to heal. It is a beautiful example of the secrets waiting to be discovered in the wonderful world of plants.